Hi everyone and welcome to the French Watch Collector. Today we have a very, very special episode where we're going to restore this beautiful watch. This Rolex Daytona is actually my uh, my grail, my uh, favorite watch. And you can see this one is in a, a very, very rough shape. Uh, a lot of scratches and we see we have a lot of uh, issues on the case and inside the movement. So what we're going to do in this video, we're going to check the watch first, disassemble everything and uh, put it back together and obviously make this watch look a lot better than what it is right now and uh, working properly as well. So I'm just winding the watch now just to check if it's uh, starting and it just started. It took a long time to start. Um, that's not a good sign. It means that there is a lot of friction inside the movement. You can see there is a scratch there on a, on a crystal. So we'll have to change that. Change the crystal, that's quite easy. And you can see there, there is one pusher which is missing or broken. Um, so yeah, that's uh, need to be addressed as well. So let's check if the chronograph is working. Just a gentle push here and it starts, it stop. Yeah, okay. And we see there is no pusher, but yeah, we can reset the watch. Looks like the chronograph is starting. I'm just gonna let it run for, for a little while or wait to see if the minute and hours are ticking. Yeah, we saw the minute and tick there. Just uh, so that's fine, it's, uh, it's working. Just gonna see if the reset as well of the chronograph is proper. Yeah, perfect. Okay, so we're gonna remove this nice bracelet. We'll uh, as well polish fully this watch because you see like it's full of scratches and it doesn't look that great anymore. So we're gonna do a, a full uh, a full service on the, on the watch and on the case and the bracelet. But first we're gonna open the case back. And actually it was not tight at all. I just uh, managed to open it with my uh, rubber ball. That's a bit scary. Just see what's inside. Wow, look at the beauty. Caliber 4130, and you can see that the Caliber 4130 is not doing a great job right now. With an amplitude of 173 degrees, that's really low. Bitter 1.1, that can go a lot better and it's losing 19 seconds a day. That's very, very poor performance. So this watch definitely need a service. So that's what we're gonna do uh, on the movement. First, we're gonna remove these three screws that keeps uh, these beautiful winding rotors in position. Gives the Daytona in, in red there. And below we can see like, look at the balance on this movement, how beautiful it is with this uh, blue air spring there. Just re gonna remove the case clamp. Just gonna free now the crown and the winding stem there. There we go, and we should be able to take the caliber out of the case. Perfect, wow, look at this beautiful dial there. So pure, I love the dial from Rolex. When you see them underneath without a the crystal, they are so beautiful gonna just align the hand just gonna remove the center hand first just gonna protect the, the dial and just use my presto tool there to remove the hand there we go just gonna safely store them in this box and gonna do the same on the sub counter hand there which were actually very tight yeah on the, and you can see this one actually it broke, yeah. You see, like the top, like uh, it stayed on the on the post there, so that's not good. We'll have to remove this uh, this part, and we'll have to change the the second hand. Just gonna remove now the dial feed screw, so we can release the dial. Look at the beauty again, shiny like of the sub, sub counter, the the purity of the white. Just lift it up very gently and now gonna put it in this little box there, which is made for it, just to keep the dial safe. Remove the cannon pinion with a presto tool again. See, we have a jewel in the center. And obviously being a Rolex, uh, these caliber are so solid and they have, they have jewels everywhere. Uh, that's what makes them uh, so strong as well and uh, can very tough and uh, can last for a long time is because almost every single part has a jewel, yeah? Uh, like uh, every rotating part, that's unbelievable. So that's why the quality of the movement 
and uh, the the solidity of this movement is coming from is uh, obviously take a lot more time a lot more money to to uh, to put the jewels like on uh, every single every single parts uh, but yeah that's uh, the quality of the rolex movement just removing the balance there just to make sure it's safe we don't damage it during this assembly. And wow, that's so nice, the color of this blue air spring there. Just gonna remove the pallet fork there with the bridge on top. Ah, you see, pallet fork is a bit stuck there, a bit sticky. Again, like that's the purpose of uh, the restoration and service on the movement. Gonna disassemble each single part, uh, clean them just to remove like any uh, dirt, uh, oil or grease and to make sure the movement will run freely again. And that's it, now we are attacking the chronograph mechanism. Look at the beauty of the wheels and the, this chronograph mechanism. It's actually quite uh, nice. It's only on one side, because you will have some chronograph mechanism which are both on the balance and the dial side. But this one is only on one side, it's quite compact. And uh, not a lot of screws for a chronograph mechanism. Oh, look at, talking about screw, look at the screw there. It just broke, yeah, while removing it. Oh, oh we'll have to solve this issue. See, so we'll either get a, a brand new screw, but I need to take out the piece which is uh, inside, so we take it down, take it out later. But uh, yeah, it was actually, I just did a couple of turns and it broke straight away. So it might, it might be even broken inside already. So yeah, that's not a good news. But we see, we'll, uh, we managed to address this issue. Carry on removing the screw there. You will see me putting some screws back on a chronograph movement as well, just to make sure uh, I don't mix them because obviously each screws on a chronograph for most of the time are different. Um, and uh, yeah, so to be sure that I don't mix them, I place them back on the movement. So that's a safe way to keep them uh, at the right place. You can see there, we can see the column wheel underneath. Obviously it's a column wheel chronograph uh, being a bit better uh, quality like a colon wheel compared to a cam with a better uh, better feeling a better uh, experience when you click uh, on the on a pusher it's a vertical clutch as well not horizontal clutch like most of the uh, vintage chronograph and uh, like let's say cheaper chronograph um, so yeah that's uh, that's a nice function as well like I said, you see at the beginning, it's a caliber 4130 from uh, from Rolex. Um, yeah, that uh, uh, obviously is a successor of the caliber 4030, and it's a direct descendant actually from the Zenitel Primera. We talked uh, about it a bit more uh, a bit later, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, obviously it's well known that uh, Rolex Rolex used uh, for a long time some modified Rolex uh, uh, some Zenitel Primera, sorry, and this one. Uh, it's a bit further away from it, but obviously still uh, from the same uh, era and same family um, from the Zenitel Primero. Just re removing the balance bridge, we see a jewel again where you have the mainspring there. Look at the beauty like this, uh, this mainspring. Wow, that's very nice the decoration on top of it. Okay, gonna remove this bridge here where we'll have the chronograph parts on top and underneath we should have other parts with the train of wheel. Look at the amount of jewels on these parts, it's unbelievable, like just there there is like most jewels and uh, uh, some of the movements are, like uh, on one watch. Okay, just removing this spring. Very, very, very careful with the spring there. We have this connecting rod there that connects the pushers to the mechanism, like to the column wheel here. Gently remove it there. Okay. Couple of uh, strange spring, like a very uh, interesting shape. And here like we have a very strong spring that uh, connect to the column wheel. That's a column wheel with a river threaded screw, you see with the three line on top. So you will have to turn it the other way around. Just try to remove it and, oops, 
with the spring is just jumped there. Did not go very far. There we go. That's uh, the spring. Can carry on the disassembly now. We have this very long part, which is actually the hack that come and stop the balance when you pull the crown to, to set the time. It's a very long one. And here we have the train of wheel with a different wheel, the escape. And that's it, we are done on uh, balance. We're gonna move back to the dial side and you see it's pretty simple on this side. Uh, almost like on any watch, we have a keyless work, um, which is uh, simple. There is obviously no date function on this watch, on a, on a Rolex Daytona, it's very simple, a chronograph without any uh, other complication, except that it's an automatic chronograph. So you will have a few extra parts for the automatic winding system, but no dates. <laughs> Setting lever there, and we can remove the last few parts with the clutch and the winding pinion there. And we're gonna peg all the jewels. So there is, I didn't put each single jewel because there is a lot, but we're just gonna use a piece of wood and just uh, to remove the dried up oil or grease. Finish to disassemble a couple of parts, which are, you see like this uh, crown wheel, for example, which is underneath the bridge. Disassemble the automatic winding system there. Again, full of jewels. Just gonna remove these three screws there. And we have the reversing wheel underneath. Gonna take apart again to clean everything. I'm just gonna open the main spring barrel assembly. Just to take out the main spring. See the barrel arbor in center. Just gonna take it. It looks quite clean actually for automatic. It's not too bad. And here we go. Now I'm just taking out the main spring. Gonna see if we put a, probably gonna put a, a brand new one just to be on a, on a safe side and to restore the full power of the watch. And I'm just gonna place back this beautiful balance. Like, oh, I cannot believe of how nice is this balance with this blue like uh, air spring. Just put it back on the, on the main plate, just to keep it safe during cleaning. Just to miss, like, yeah, we need to protect this uh, air spring, which is very, very, very thin and very fragile. Gonna take out the jewels just to clean them as well. Gonna oil them after, after cleaning. Gonna do the same thing on the other side. And on uh, most of the Rolex movement, you have jewels as well on the escape, uh, for the escape wheel. So we're gonna take those as well out of the main plate and all these parts are gonna go in uh, small baskets um, and gonna put them into my uh, vintage uh, Elma cleaning machine uh, again just to make sure that all the parts fully clean uh, oil is removed dirt is removed and uh, to restore the performance of the caliber because we saw it was not running very nicely so yeah we we need to clean them very very well so that's it all the parts are in the baskets and we're gonna put them into the cleaning machine. We do a cleaning first, two rinsing, and the last step will be a drain. I would like to use this opportunity during cleaning to tell you that I have a Patreon page. You can go there and support the channel if you like the content. It will help me a lot to buy a new product, new material. And I would like to thank Matt, Christian, David, Shelby, Jan, Christian, Corney, Alan, Dave, Ted, Tony, Michael, Stephen, John, Tim, and Gregory. Thank you so much guys for supporting me to support my channel. And uh, I will put a link down below in the description. If you did not subscribe there, you can go again and uh, support my channel. That means a lot to me and thanks in advance for your help. Okay, the parts are now drying. And there we go, all the parts fully dry and ready to go back on the watch. If you did not subscribe to the channel, I will uh, advise you to subscribe. I'll put a video once a week you can click on a bell icon just to get a reminder and uh, click as well on the blue thumbs up if you like the video. Uh, I think more than 50% like uh, of the people are not subscribed to the channel that are watching my video. So I would really appreciate if you can click on the subscribe button that will help me as well to promote my channel and my video and share the passion with uh, a lot more watch lover. So thanks in advance. Okay, I'm gonna 
do uh, epilam treatment on all the parts which are recommended from uh, from Rolex to be treated in epilam on his uh, on his movement. Just gonna dry them. Going to remove after uh, epilam from a pivot point of a couple of parts there that we don't need. And uh, we're going to focus after on uh, oiling the jewels. So that we just did. And now I can place them back on the movement. So first the balance, closing the spring there. Just the other side. There we go. Just do the same on the dial side, just closing the spring, tiny little spring there, you see up just one length went in and we need to put the second one, gonna check as well, that's the uh, one I was talking on the escape, we have the same on the, on, the, on the bridge, it's just a simple stone and you see there, just checking if the balance is beating, yeah, that looks good, air spring is flat, perfect. Okay, so now I'm just gonna focus on removing, you remember? the broken uh, screw that was inside uh, this part there. So I'm gonna use this special tool, which is uh, made specially to remove broken screw. I'm gonna trap uh, the broken piece in between these two uh, arms. And I'm just gonna make the part rotate around in the right direction, there we go. And uh, the screw is gonna come out very slowly as I turn the, turn the parts. Go, just need a couple more turns. And that's it. And you see like the little piece in between the two parts, just gonna open there. And that actually is a broken part of the screw. There we go, it just fall, down, fall out now. And that's it. The part is free now. Uh, the broken screw is, uh, is released. We can carry on the assembly. Again, just placing the jewel. That's the one for the escape wheel. Just did the, the same thing we did on the main plate. Just gonna oil these uh, two jewels with my uh, automatic oiler. Much easier to do. Here we go, just to drop of oil there. Gonna reassemble uh, the main spring barrel assembly. Just putting some graphite grease on the wall. Obviously being an automatic movement, the spring will slide on the walls because you never stop winding on an automatic movement. And like I said, we just put a, a new main spring just to make sure we have the full power of the watch. Uh, because I don't know when this watch was the last time service. We saw that on a time grapher, the result was very, very poor. So just to make sure everything will be uh, best as we can, we put a, a new main spring inside. Just gonna lubricate, we're gonna put the barrel arbor. Here we go, just placing the barrel arbor now in the main spring. And the whole of the arbor there, perfect. And we can close it. Love the finish on this uh, main spring assembly. It's beautiful with this kind of uh, snailing finish on top of it and uh, underneath. Okay, we're gonna assemble like uh, parts that go underneath the bridge. Piece of dust that I need to remove. Placing the screw there. Okay, so first we need to uh, assemble the keyless work, a part of the keyless work. So we're gonna grease all the parts that is uh, recommended. So obviously for this movement, I use like the uh, tech sheet from Rolex. I tell you uh, in which order you need to assemble the parts, uh, which grease that you need to use and where you need to put it as uh, very uh, practical. Go putting there setting lever, springs that go on top of it. Give a tiny screw. Yeah, I need to make sure this part is aligned properly. Yeah, here we go. We have the intermediate wheel here. Gonna put the yoke. Again, you can see me putting a lot of this blue grease, which is actually a high viscosity grease uh, because this part will see a lot of friction between each other. Um, a lot of uh, 
force uh, strength. So that's why we use like um, this heavy grease and the part that go on top, is, which is actually a spring. It's a setting lever spring. We see with armor, that's a spring there. There we go. Can put now the second screw. I'm gonna check if uh, everything is working when we pull on it. Yeah, that looks good. Okay, we almost uh, assemble everything on this side. We come back to do the rest, but now we're gonna move to the balance and uh, start assemble as to to assemble a few parts. Actually, starting with uh, some parts from the chronograph. So you remember this uh, huge long spring there that's connected to the column wheels that we're gonna install here, which is basically, if you want, the brain of the chronograph. Uh, that's why well, this wheel, when it will turn, it will make each single part of the chronograph movement move to do this job, like a start, stop, and reset. So yeah, that's a brain, if you want, like I said, of the, of the chronograph. We grease it properly. And again, springs. So like I said, this one is a caliber 4130, which is uh, uh, the replacement for the caliber 4030. And uh, the 4030 is like a direct link to the Zenitel Primero. That's why Rolex used. They started with the Daytona, obviously like a lot of chronograph uh, in the 60s being uh, manual because automatic chronograph was not existing. And I think they were using a Valjou, uh, a Valjou uh, movement in their uh, Daytonas. And um, after they moved to the Zenith El Primero, but obviously uh, with a lot of modification uh, to the Zenith El Primero. First, the Zenith El Primero has a date um, at between uh, four and five o'clock, uh, but Daytona, no Daytona has a date. So they had to modify the movement, uh, a lot more modification, obviously with the balance wheel and a lot of other parts which were uh, made specially uh, by, by Rolex. And one of the big, difference between the Zenitel Primero and uh, the Rolex movements is as well the bit per hour. Obviously, it's very famous that the Zenitel Primero is a 36,000 bit per hour chronograph with uh, a very high frequencies. And uh, I think more for a reason of, uh, um, yeah, is robustness, like uh, because that's the main thing from Rolex um, and reliability, they bring down the bit power to 28,800 and they didn't keep the 36, uh, 36,000 from the Zenitel Primero. So yeah, that's a, a big difference between the, between the two movements. Uh, but obviously we know the quality of the Zenitel Primero even still today, the movement, it's uh, still running and still used by Zenit. Um, so obviously Rolex made a, a fanta fantastic choice to use this uh, movement as a base for their automatic uh, caliber in their Daytonas. And the 4130, that's a caliber that we are working on now. Obviously, it's uh, again improved for 4030. And uh, one of the big difference is that move to a vertical clutch compared to the horizontal clutch that you can find in the, um, in the caliber 4030 and the Zenitel Primero. Uh, obviously, there is a lot of other improvements uh, much easier to maintain the 4130, lot less parts, lot less screws. Um, there is a couple of parts which are a lot more accessible, like for example, the balance, um, sorry, the, the main spring barrel assembly, uh, which is uh, accessible without, if you want, dismantling the entire uh, mechanism. Uh, so you can change, you can change just the main spring more easily if you want compared to the Zenitel Primero where you have to disassemble everything if you want to change your mainspring. Um, so yeah, they, they, ma they made a lot of uh, changes and improvement, obviously, compared to Zenitel Primero. But at the base, it's a Zenitel Primero uh, in, the, in this Rolex uh, automatic movement, which is a 4030 or even still on a 4130. Okay, so now we reassemble the train of wheel going well, like uh, very nicely, lubricating there with my automatic oiler, putting a, we're gonna put the ratchet wheel, but first we're gonna focus on the case. Uh, you remember the case at the beginning, but well, it's pretty scratched. 
are gonna remove all all the gaskets because we're gonna re replace all of them, obviously. So this is a, a triple crown lock from Rolex, so it means that you will have three gaskets, two inside the tube, you see there, actually four in this one. You have a small one on the outside and you will have one inside the crown wheel. We're gonna remove the pushers. Okay, that's a fully assembled pusher. There we go. And we're gonna remove, using this special tool there, the tube. You see, we'll have a, a stars kind of shape inside. And the tool that I'm using there, it has the exact opposite, uh, the stars that we can unscrew the tube. There we go. Gonna do the same thing on the, on the pushers. You see with the star again, that come on a pusher there. And we're gonna unscrew the pusher. Obviously in this case, we need to replace them because I mean, one is, uh, is broken and we remove the pusher just for the, uh, as well to, to polish a case because you don't want to have the pushers in the way and the tube. Gonna remove the crown. Use this uh, torture tool there. I just press and lift up the crown. You can see the crystal is uh, scratched there. Yeah, quite a big scratch, a big uh, bang on it probably. And all these parts will go into the ultrasonic machine just to make sure they get uh, clean and all the dirt is removed uh, everywhere. Just put a small part in these baskets and the rest, there we go. Just go into the ultrasonic. Just leave it there for 15, 20 minutes just to make sure the bracelet, all the metal parts are fully clean. Okay, we're gonna start the polishing. So first we're gonna do a first stage. We're gonna remove uh, the big scratches. So that's not the finishing stage. Just gonna do it uh, obviously on the case, everywhere on the case. Just gonna do it as well on the case back, polish the, polish the case back. And you see, you have different type of finish as well that we are gonna redo a bit later on. So there we go. And we're gonna do the last, the bracelet. Polish the bracelet and remove the scratches, obviously, from the uh, both side of the bracelet, the clasp uh, as well that need to be uh, that need to be polished. There we go. So now we're just gonna polish the clasp. And as well, we have the, the crown here that I'm polishing. So we move to the second step there, where we're gonna do a, a final uh, finish on the polish. We're gonna, now we remove all the scratches. We want the surface to be uh, as shiny as possible with removing all the little, little, tiny uh, scratches. So we do the same thing on the, on the case, on a bracelet, on a clasp, uh, on, the, on the basil. Uh, all the all the different parts and here we're gonna start to do the finish so you see I protected the middle with a tape and I'm gonna do a satin finish on the outside and the center will stay uh, shiny because it's protected with this tape that's why it's done on this uh, bracelet I'm gonna do the same thing on a on a clasp protect everything with uh, all the shiny parts will it be under the tape. Well, we're going to do a, a straight line on the case back. You see the outside is polish, polished and the center is uh, straight. Okay, so now we have done on, uh, on the case. We're going to move back to the movement. Just put the click in position with the little spring underneath. And now we have the crown, the put there a bit of grease. Greasing again here, we're gonna put the minute wheel. Can okay, pinion is in place, we just put this uh, bridge on top that keeps the minute wheel in position. Gonna oil the different jewel there and just checking everything is working yeah in different position obviously when you pull the crown gonna wind the watch 
now we put all the parts just checking and we see that the uh, palette is clicking left and right so that's good just gonna oil that's very tricky the outside jewels on the palette fork and we can place a beautiful balance and see if the movement went to start just very need to be very gentle on this uh, on this part there actually quite tricky to put this uh, balance with like this bridge just yeah gently pushing until like all the pivot point fall into the jewels not yet you just need to be stay patient there just going to use my other tool just to move everything around Oh, just move there not yet yes that's it perfect just started great it looks in good actually when it's uh, when it's uh, beating like the amplitude looks good visually we see a bit the result later on a, on a time grapher but uh, perfect we can carry on we have a, a running movement so now we're gonna carry on assembling the rest of the part from the chronograph and we have these two parts there which are actually from the vertical clutch so I'm gonna come and lift or let the wheel go down to uh, to stop and start the chronograph. This uh, spring on top. Two big screws on this one. There we go. Just gonna lubricate and check if everything is working already. When I push a button there, that looks good. It's quite practical as well. You see, to have these tools to. Uh, to uh, to keep the movement inside with the with the button, so very easy very easy to test uh, the movement. And these uh, movement holders are, are are nice. Okay, putting like the wheels from the chronograph. We see the minute wheel, the hour wheel. This is a minute wheel. We have this spring that go into the center chronograph wheel to keep it under tension, to have a, a nice, smooth second hand. Again, with a couple of parts there. We have the hammer, we're gonna lubricate all the parts that need to be lubricated. I'm gonna put it in position. So that's the parts that come and hit the cam on the chronograph wheel and reset the chronograph to, to zero. So that's a very important part. Going to lubricate a couple of parts I put uh, before I put this bridge on top with the 4130 uh, number on it, telling you which caliber it is. Okay, chronograph wheel underneath are in place, so we can put the screw. And you can see now the chronograph is running. I'm gonna see if the minute wheel is jumping. Tac, yeah, perfect. We saw the nice jump of the minute. So we can reset everything. Tac, the hammer just hit the wheel and reset everything. That's working perfectly so far. So gonna oil the jewels that need to be oiled. And we can move to the automatic uh, subsystem that's gonna reassemble and oil like, like all the other parts. So we have the two reversing wheel there that allow the movement to uh, to wind. If you want, doesn't matter in which direction the rotor uh, is gonna turn, it's gonna wind the movement only in one direction because obviously the spring can be uh, turned only in one direction. Okay, putting the bridge back on top. And again, you see like these massive jewels on the wheel, like, uh, uh, yeah, that's, uh, such a solid movement from Rolex. Okay, putting the screws. Just checking everything is turning. Again, we have to oil all the jewels to make sure everything will run smoothly and the part don't wear quickly. And we can place, and you see like this automatic is like, is integrated in, uh, in the movement. It's not on top of it. So you see that's why one of the 
uh, strength of the Rolex Daytona is like it's a, such a thin watch for an automatic chronograph. Um, and it was one of the strengths as well from the Rolex the Zenith El Primero as well. Um, and yeah, that's, uh, that's great. Okay, so now we move to the dial side. We're gonna put uh, our wheel with the spring on top. We can place back this beautiful dial. Didn't do anything, obviously, on a dial. It's perfect, like, didn't need to be clean or anything. Pretty clean. Just putting the screws to maintain the dial in position. Gonna place back the, the hand, so the hour hand first. Press it in position. the minute hand that we're gonna put and uh, I'll end to midnight just to make sure there we go there just press it the subsequent hand so that's the second for the timing which is uh, keep running all the time the hour hand from the chronograph that we're gonna align at 12, obviously, being the zero position from the chronograph. Just gonna press in position. The second hand from the chronograph that go right into the center. Same thing, need to be aligned at 12 o'clock, which is a zero position from the chronograph. And the new second uh, minute hand, sorry, that we just replaced. Remember, the other one was broken. Perfect. Just going to put back the tube. So put a bit of uh, Loctite there uh, on the thread just to make sure everything stay in position. Everything is sealed. Same thing on the chronograph uh, uh, tube for the pushers. So we put the first one. Same thing on the second one. Gonna replicate the new uh, gasket that we put on this uh, part there that we come and hold the pushers in position. Usually it's not a, a diving watch, so yeah, you don't go like, uh, but yeah, you need to be uh, properly watertight. And for the same thing, we're gonna replace all the different uh, gaskets that go on this watch. So that's the one that would go on a tube. So there is a one that go on the outside of the tube, a thin one. There we go, that's in position. And two go inside the tube. So that's the first one. Gonna put, press it inside the tube and gonna put now the second one. There we go, in position. Putting a, a brand new crystal. And just checking, you see the chronograph is working. Just checking now is the minute and the hours are moving. Yeah, that looks good. We see the hour hand just ticking ever so slightly. So the chronograph is working perfectly. Putting the last gasket in the, in the crown here. Place back. The case on top with the brand new crystal. And we can uh, secure now the movement inside the case by placing the two case clamp that will keep an all the movement in uh, in position just putting the second one actually prefer the system that you have on uh, on a Rolex a submariner with these screws that uh, come and uh, go up and uh, keep the movement tight it's much easier to uh, put uh, in place and we have this beautiful rotor there with the three screws in the middle with the ball bearing and the Daytona in red is wonderful. Putting the first screw there, I'm gonna put the other two. I'm gonna replicate as well the ball bearing inside just to make sure it can turn freely. Yeah, that looks good and you can see the wheels underneath are moving. It's winding the mechanism doesn't matter which way it's turning. The back gaskets gonna lubricate in molycode like all the other gasket we put. Just to make sure again, the watch is fully watertight. There we go. 
Oh, it just didn't go on one side there. Yeah, perfect. Can close the case back. Gonna put now the bezel on top, need to be aligned. I'm gonna use this uh, press, this customized press from, uh, from Orotech uh, in carbon. So I will put the link down below if you want to buy this tool from Orotech. They are great tools, uh, customized tools. Yeah, anybody can buy them. Um, so I have this uh, press there for, for crystal and the tool as well to close the case back or open a case back. They are such a nice tool. So I will put the link down below in the description if you wanna go and have a look. Okay, the watch now is fully closed. Just gonna place back the bracelet just before we see what's the result on a time grapher. Just gonna start the chrono and you can see already, look how beautiful and shiny is the watch. Even now it's not uh, fully clean. Yeah, we do a last clean by hand. And uh, let's see the chronograph ticking. So nice, this Daytona. And the important on the chronograph is to see if the reset is perfect and go back to zero. So we're gonna stop the chrono and see the reset. Yeah, perfect. I would like to tell you and use this opportunity to tell you that I have my own website. You can find the link down below in a video. Uh, I'll tell you a bit more about the channel. I'm selling some of the watch that I restored on the channel. So if you wanna go and uh, buy one of the watch that I restored, and as well, I offer a service. Um, so if you want to send me your watch to service, like for example, this Rolex Daytona, you can go ahead and contact me and I will be more than happy to, to work on your watch. And that's it. That's the final result on the, on the, on the time grapher. 350, remember the amplitude, remember we're 170, bit error perfect, just gaining one second a day. This watch is running perfectly. The owner will be uh, happy with the result and can enjoy this watch for many, many years now until the next service. And look the beauty, now it's fully polished and uh, he restored uh, this uh, former glory. Uh, beautiful watch and it's still my, uh, my holy grail. So I hope you like the video and I see you in my next episode. Bye bye.